Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day on Oweleke TV, reaching your life and direct from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. And this is the time for Newspaper Review. My name is Ramsey and joining me is Bright and Michael. Good morning, Bright and Michael. Good morning, Mr. Ramsey. Hello, Good morning. Good morning, Bright. Straight to the headlines for today, beginning from the Punch newspaper above the header. One of the writers says a windfall tax. Federal government insists on sanctions for defaulting bank chiefs. Just one writer to that story proposes 10% penalty on withheld levy. Details read on page 23. Organized private sector opposes fresh interest rate hike. Details read on page 23. Then that takes us to the big story. Well, the kicker for the big story says a fuel crisis. Marketers project 700 billion naira monthly subsidy to write us to that story. NNPC mom as dealers insist government still paying subsidy. Reps probe crude shortage. Then the second writer says that Dangote eyes a foreign market for refinery products. Federal government meets carry Dangote over a dispute. Details read on page two. And finally, uh, from the Punch newspaper this morning, hunger protest. NLC wants against clamp down. Details read on page 16. More stories on the Punch newspaper. Just try picking a copy so you can go through it for more details. Over to you for the next paper, Michael. Thank you, Ramsey. We'll move straight to the new telegraph today. Above the head of Nigeria's GDP likely to lose $122 billion in one year. That is coming from OB. One writer to the story says, leaders busy funding lifestyle amid poverty. Details on page four. Uh, we'll deal with you like ghosts. Enugu security agencies want stay at home promoters. Details read page two. Away from that, a big story, the kicker says, plant protests, eating from dust beans, now luxury. Address cries of Nigerians, Nigeria Labour Congress, tells President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Details on page 2, 4 and 29, one writer to the story. Abbas raises the alarm over food insecurity. Allegation against OB Onanoga, ebophobic, uncouth. That is coming from Ohaneze. I'll take that right there again. Allegation against OB or Nanuga, ebophobic and uncute. That is coming from Ohaneze. Away from that, reps begin proof of adulterated fuel. Details reach page 3 and 26. Uh, the last story I'll take on the New Telegraph today. National minimum wage is the key. As Senate NCWS canvas domestic servants inclusion. Uh, as minister says, 6.2 trillion naira supplementary budget for rail, road projects, new minimum wage, and all that. Details read on page three. Do well to pick a copy of the New Telegraph today. Over to you, Bright. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, with me today, I have the Guardian newspaper, and uh, the big story we have here is uh, over 30,000 jobs lost to closure of manufacturing firms in four years. Over 30,000 jobs lost. To closure of manufacturing firms in four years. We have um, another story here which says federal government, Dangote, and NMPC held to meet and explore solutions to refinery and, and to end um, crude crisis. Uh, we, have, we have another story which says planned protests, NLC, NANS, others insist government must address hunger and hardship. We have uh, the final story we have here today on the Guardian of is GDP ranking. It's been nine years of retrogression will be laments. Over to you, Ramsey. Thank you very much, Bright, for those headlines. Quickly, let's take the last paper for the day, which is the Nigerian News Direct. Above the header, we will utilize 6.2 trillion extra budgetary proposal to boost infrastructure. That's the federal government saying that, and it is read on page six. ASUP suspends strike as NBTE succumbs to demands. Details read on page 22. About she records sharp drop in school attendance as free meal stops. Well, the school feeding program uh, stopped because of some irregularities. And of course, uh, some students, some pupils have stopped going to school in Bauchi State. You know how hunger is in the northern part of Nigeria where you see some children carrying plates going about looking for food. Probably those in school were taking advantage of the school feeding program and now that it's been stopped, 
the poopies have stopped going to school. After 13 years, Bayesa gets approval for National Park. A dirty diesel allegation does the Kika federal government waits in to resolve tussle between Dangote and MP, NM. DPRA, all right. The toss of the fight, uh, the crude not given Dangote refinery crude as at yesterday. Dangote expresses his frustration to say, Well, he's ready to give up the ownership of the Dangote refinery to the federal government and NPCL if they so desire, instead of frustrating him. The big story says, No protest needed, we are tackling hardship. Economic clampdown that's coming from the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president is appealing, he's begging. And three riders to that story food inflation. We share your pain. Halved our salaries. That's the House of Rep members. The speaker is the one saying that. Uh, dialogue with protesters avoid confrontation. NLC president urges federal government. You know, the federal government came up to say, well, we know the people behind this um, nationwide protest. And, um, NLC is saying dialogue. Don't come with confrontation because that's going to be bad. Uh, the last writer to that story say Candidates Christian Association of Nigeria, Labour, Students Union, others this own plant protest back federal government. Well, I don't know if these people have what it takes to stop Nigerians from protesting. Uh, maybe just because of the hunger. I think every, the only thing that can stop this protest right now is that the 20 bag of, uh, the 20 trucks of rice given to states, if it actually goes round. And that's going to be the size of the headlines for today. Let's go on a quick break. We'll return back and we'll bring to you, uh, the big story. What is the big story all about? The big story is all about the fact that 30,000 jobs have been lost. Okay, because of the closure of manufacturing companies. We'll return and we'll talk more about that. Don't go anywhere. Follow us on our social media handles at Obuleke TV. Visit our website at www.obuleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Obuleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back from that break. It is still outnumbered live on your screen on this beautiful uh, Tuesday morning. And we are reaching you live and direct from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. We told you that on return, it's going to be time for the big story. And the big story is right on the Guardian newspaper, if you're actually following the review, where it says uh, over 30,000 jobs, all right, lost the closure of manufacturing firms in four years, meaning this didn't start with just this administration. It's been on for the past four years. This administration is barely um, uh, uh, two years in office. So as it is right now, what can we say may have been the effect of um, this job loss as a result of the closure of manufacturing firms? And what do you think can actually be responsible for the closure of manufacturing firms in the first place michael let's begin from you the whole story all right thirty thousand jobs lost why because manufacturing firms we are closed up probably because of the economic situation yeah. all right mm. do you see this as part of the reason why there is um i don't know fall in the economy that has resulted to what we are facing right now, the hunger, of course. I think it's unfavorable government policies because last year, I could recall, Francis Meshoye, uh, the president of Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, stated categorically to the, to the presidency why companies like P&G, GSK, and Unilever left Nigeria. And if I can recall, sir, um, that sector is a key sector, very uh, delicate because manufacturing sector, like he pleaded to the government to pay special attention to them because they play a key role in production of food and services that also aids to boost, to boost Nigeria's economy. Uh, when the highest of them, P&G, left, 
they left uh, they left with about fifty billion dollars investments in Nigeria, PNG. I could recall they left with over one thousand workers left unemployed. Then GSK left also the same twenty twenty three. These are manufacturing companies that are really really big in Nigeria. Uh, GSK also left and left with uh, twenty two billion dollars invest investment in Nigeria with over seven hundred twenty two workers becoming unemployed. Hmm. And then the other one that left, they are based in home care and um, home care and um, what is it called? Cream and yeah, uh, Unilever, right? Yeah. Unilever, Uni- Unilever is as old as, um, as old, some some yeah. some some children. Yeah, as old as independence. They've been here and then yeah. leaving Nigeria in 2023. We grew so, up to meet yeah, uh, Unilever. We grew up to, to know Unilever. The very popular Unilever left also 2023. They were known before as um, the Niger Company. Thank you. Niger, before, before they became, yeah, before they became Unilever. Unilever. So left with also about uh, 80 billion dollars investment. Um, according to my destin, and then remember they have microbiologists, uh, pharmacists in their employment. Yeah. With averagely dermatologists, yeah, dermatologists, the biochemists. biochemists. Uh, remember they have with, with averagely over eight hundred to two thousand workers, apart from the biochemists, and then these people becoming losing their job because these foreign companies have left so what was the cause unfavorable taxation multiple uh government not giving them favorable um policy climate they've been clamoring for favorable policy climate the federal government keeps making uh you know this distance very hard for them uh these challenges were grappling with them and they thought ah we've had it up to our neck and we have to leave as they left we all know what has happened to the manufacturing sector over the years in five years now we've 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 lost so much. So much people have been unemployed. Nigeria has lost so much, and average, of course, you know, it has aided to the scarcity of food and commodities in the market. And though, and you know, this 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 sector is very critical and very very delicate to Nigeria. So when the manufacturing association is saying that, hey, Nigeria has lost so much for five years time. Of course, it's been 2022, 2023. These companies left, and they left a hole that has not been filled. They left a void. That is yet to be filled in okay. the sector uh, yet, and people people are still clamoring because these are foreign companies already. But then the investment they made in the country has has been benefiting Nigeria. Like, like I mentioned, fifty billion, twenty two billion investment, hundred billion investment, all leaving the sector is not a is not a good thing. All good, right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me get to Bright now. Bright, um, you heard what Michael said. Uh, each and every one of us, uh, this statement is not new to us this explanation is not new to us now we are feeling the impact of the closure of these uh, manufacturing firms okay apart from the fact that people lost their jobs there are so many other things all right that has affected the economy and one of the things that the president of the federal republic the now president of the federal republic of nigeria did when he came into office was that he felt um we need a conducive atmosphere, all right, for these companies to return. Mm-hmm. And warning of investors has been one of the core mandates of this administration. What do you think the federal government can do, all right, for probably these firms to come back or investors to come in? Because looking at the economy right now, no one would want to come and invest in this kind of economy and the impact. Is having all the people talking about what um, the federal government is going to do about uh, the foreign investors leaving the country. I think um, it's actually um, the both sides right now that are feeling the heat because most of these um, foreign companies that are leaving the country are, have not recovered from their COVID, uh, um, the COVID, the COVID, impact, uh, COVID. impact. Yes, most of them are still struggling to come back from the. Uh, financial um, 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 recession that they entered as, as companies, you understand? Because those international companies, they suffered the most during this, uh, during that pandemic because they were, they had workers all over the world that they were paying during the pandemic and they were not gaining, they were, the companies were not making money. So the companies, a lot of them ran into debts, you understand? So most of these companies are still struggling to to to, to find themselves. That is why you, you find a lot of companies is, is it part of the reason they left Nigeria? The yeah. COVID nineteen. Yes, yes. I think that is what uh, a lot of these companies say that they, that they have internal issues. They they don't usually say that uh, the, the policy of the country is what is a, a, affecting them. You understand? They usually say that oh, 
they just have to go back on now. Like, because we have um, the likes of um, GSK. Glasgow's Midland didn't only leave Nigeria, it left the, the entire Africa. You understand? So it's not about a country right now. It's about the companies. The companies are, are being stressed. So they are calling themselves back to go and reorganize in their base. But they start going out again. We have a lot of foreign companies too that are also pulling out. You understand? This, this is not only happening in one country. If you check it very well, you see that it's happening across the, the continents and all over the world. They are gradually pulling out to go and re-strategize again before they go out again because the the impact of COVID. Okay, meaning meaning these companies are are closing down. No, is no, that what you mean? They are, they are not closing, but they are trying to reduce their expenditure. By so they the need of they need to close down. When you talk about reduction of staff, um, it's different from closing down. The question I, I asked is, what do you think? Because the the president. Is far beyond just saying we need investors, warning investors. No one will want to put his money where they know it will not yield interest, where the atmosphere, the environment, the economy is not favorable. Like you said, uh, this company left, okay, uh, Nigeria. In some other African countries, they reduce re retrenching staff, reduction of staff, and still remaining in operation. It's different from total close down and um, everyone losing their job because if the company is still there there will be hope that someday probably they may come up and call back their their staff that's what i mean uh i don't know if you're trying to say well that's subject to research anyway if you're trying to say these um companies have totally closed down they want to go back and re-strategize okay so what we're actually saying is what can the government of nigeria do because um i don't think all these companies left nigeria these are the ones that you know you just mentioning three, all right? Just he mentioned three. Google also left, okay? And um, Microsoft. Microsoft, I beg your pardon, you, you know? So, so many others left because of the economy and the environment. So, worrying investors, what do we need to do to be sure that these investors can come? That's what we mean. Uh, I think currently the federal government is uh, are trying their best to... Uh, do some so to give them a certain leverage these investors because we can see how they are trying to uh, settle the rift currently going on between NFPCL and um, the Dango State Refinery you see because you know that it's actually going to paint the country on a bad image that and a uh, citizen is having issues in his, with his investment in his own country so they are trying to 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 to, to arrange that that uh, issue so that it will not escalate into something that will drive away foreign investors and by the way, they have they have also um, done a lot of things like um, the industrial the power. They have also uh, signed a lot of uh, favorable policies that are also now inviting and attracting a lot of foreign investors into the country. We have had the likes of Siemens and others that have shown interest in coming in, into the country because of the policies. Those uh, those um, bills that 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 um, the president has signed to law as of last year to allow these people to do what what they want. You understand? So I think they are making their own moves. But uh, a lot of these companies. We want to exploit the country, you understand? Because the 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 because at the end of the day, the citizens will not know that oh, this is what the government is actually trying to prevent them from um, encountering. We 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 only see the outside, but we we don't really get the, the details. A lot of these companies are actually very manipulative when they get okay. There, they don't. They just don't want to open up the reason yes, why they are leaving. Exactly. All right, talking about um, the, Dango the, refinery. The, you know, the, yesterday we actually explained. They they mentioned monetary policy crisis they also mentioned the issue of foreign exchange that has been able the floating of the yeah, naira, of naira being the, the the major reason why this companies are living they were like this economy you guys are operating is unfavorable to us we have been choked the, uh, they met with the federal government back to back why is it that this currency paying monetary policies cannot be cannot be um very very uh good to us so that we that you guys are gaining from we're actually helping nigeria because it reduced importation helping the economy to boost and they invested so much in nigeria so if the monetary policies by the federal government is not favorable companies will leave that's what it is here yeah. okay um uh, that, that's contrary to what um uh, bright has just said and uh, more is still coming contrary to what you said uh you talked about um uh foreign investors and all of that that um i think um the problem more is with um 
I think the companies and the foreign investors I would like also to let us know that um, Dangote has at yesterday said they are getting a lot of orders uh, from abroad uh, while the Nigerian people are not really taking his refinery serious and the battle is becoming too much but the good thing is that um, the federal government is waging uh, is getting into the issue to resolve it. I think um, this can even be something that um, investors can actually take advantage of. We should the federal government know what to do to make the environment conducive for foreign investors and if that is done i tell you the truth even if these companies that left are not returning back better and bigger companies can also come invest in the country so let's keep our fingers crossed and see what this administration is going to do to make sure uh, the glory of um, nigeria and the economy is being restored back this is going to be the size of the head of um, the big story on our number today will come on your way again and that's going to be tomorrow my name is Ramsey Enoch. Have a beautiful day.